Hey all, it's the boy Brad again. Welcome back to another video. I'm probably gonna do some of these long form videos. I haven't done a long form video in what, like almost a year maybe? If you've been living under a rock, WWE Clash of the Castle takes place tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. my time at least. There are five matches on the card and I thought I'd do this thing where I'd like predict every single WWE event or whatever that's coming up soon. And I think Clash at the Castle, the recent one, it might be a good place to start with me. Also, to any of my subscribers who are not wrestling fans, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in a live stream soon enough. But if you do decide to stick around, I got some rambling to do with y'all today. Trust me, trust me. And with that being said, make sure to like the video if you like this. Subscribe to the channel. Turn on that notification bell so you don't miss another video from me again. And with that... Let's get right into this Clash at the Castle card. The first match we got on par is Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill defending their Women's Tag Championships against Alba Fire and Isla Dawn and Zoe Stark and Shayna Baszler. Now, usually with these women's tag matches, I, I usually don't care. Like, like I, I like the matches are good, fun and all, when it's like multi-men, multi-women, but when like there's like a type titles on the line... Six people, two teams each. I don't know where to go. Alba Fire is from Scotland. I don't know if um Isla Dawn is too. But they can basically be the hometown favorite. And if you don't want to root for Piper Niven, which I'll get into soon, and Drew McIntyre, who I'll definitely get be getting to at the end, then your best bet is for Alba Fire. Either way, however it goes... I have Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill retaining their titles. They just won it last month. I don't think there's any possible way like a strong duel like them is going to get stopped anytime soon. I mean, Zoe Stark and Shayna Baszler have a chance to, but either way, I'm still going off of what I said. Jade Cargill and Bianca Belair for the win. Up here we have Sami Zayn defending the Intercontinental Championship against Chad Gable. They already faced off two times this year. Once, one time for the title and one time not for the title. He, by the way, dethroned Gunther, Gunther at WrestleMania this past April to become Intercontinental Champion after ending Gunther's 666 day long reign, which is like almost like three years or so. No, no, two years, two years. It's two years. I switched around two years with three years there. Either way, one or two scenarios can happen. Either one team Alpha Academy turn on him, like through the match, and Sami Zayn retains, or Academy attempts the turn, but instead they're met with a different team that helps Gable with the Creed Brothers. They're good, but like the last one, this match is also hard to predict because for one, you have Sami Zayn, and he's basically like electric or whatever. He's trying to save Otis from from Chad Gable's manip like abuse or whatever. Not literally physically, but like mentally it's tolling on him. If you watch any form of WWE programming involving him, then you'd know that he is, he is not comfortable in a situation like that. On the other hand, Chad Gable's 38 years old. This could be his last long-form contract. He might sign one in his mid-40s. I don't know. If he'll go to WWE, AEW, New Japan, it's all beyond me. But for now, I got Sami Zayn. Yeah, I got Sami Zayn retaining his Intercontinental Championship against Chad Gable. The third match on par is Bailey defending her WWE Women's Championship against Piper Niven. She's also from Scotland. If you don't want to root for Alba Fire, Isla Dawn, or Drew McIntyre, which I'll get into here in a couple of minutes, then you got Piper Niven to root for. The EO Sky for the Women's Championship at WrestleMania this past April. I was going to talk about WrestleMania on the channel, like, near April-ish, but the last few months of school had to get to me, so... Anyway, just like the Bianca and Cargill situation, there's a chance that Niven proves everyone wrong, she wins the championship, she has a huge Scotland homecoming like everyone wants, still at the same time, Bailey, she's coming off this huge run, she recently defended her title at Backlash, defended that in a triple threat match which also involved Naomi and Tiffany Stratton which could be one of my favorite women's matches of the year if anything else doesn't happen this year just like what I've said so far 
I got Bailey retaining her championship. Co-main event of the night, at least in my eyes, I'd say, is Cody Rhodes defending his undisputed WWE Championship against AJ Styles in an I Quit match. It basically means instead of pitting or submitting your opponent, you literally have to beat them senseless until they yell, I quit. And then the match just ends. Like, they want to quit. Like, not le legitimately quit WWE or anything like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna stop. I'm just gonna stop that. It's, it's just gonna end up confusing. It also brings back things from the AJ... But sorry, from the Chad Gable thing that I said before, since AJ, he's 47. He is nearing 50 years old and is still wearing and tearing his body in the wrestling business. And faked a retirement to get his spot, and Cody Rhodes wanted the I Quit stipulation for AJ or whatever. And Cody beat Roman Reigns for the championship at WrestleMania. Most, most WrestleMania had new champions or whatever. Roman's was a big deal. 1,000. 316 days. No one in our lifetime is going to do that again. Not my lifetime, not your lifetime, not your grandparents' lifetime, none of that. Nada. Zero. Enough about Roman Reigns, let's talk about the match. AJ's clearly the underdog, Cody's the favorite. If AJ's situation in WWE really is running up, maybe he is plotting retirement, then I really don't seem to care. Cody Rhodes is retaining his championship. And I'm only saying everyone else is retaining their championship for one reason only. That is the main event of the show. Damian Priest versus Drew McIntyre for the World Heavyweight Championship. Drew is the main favorite. His hometown, Air Scotland, is about 40 miles from Glasgow where the show is taking place. This match actually has me conflicted because for one, you're looking at the underdog favorite, the, ho the home country favorite here. Who, got, who got screwed over at WrestleMania. He beat Seth Rollins for the championship only for CM Punk to attack him, leaning for Drew, for Damian Priest to cash in his Money in the Bank briefcase and beat McIntyre in like, what, seven seconds to win the World Heavyweight Championship. But he that championship for like five minutes. Could tell why um he would be the one to be the favorite to win. He, this is his home country here. I, I will stop putting the emphasis here. I'd say on um, one side of me wants Damian Priest to retain due to CM Punk interference or Joe Hendry interference. I believe. On the other side of me, Drew McIntyre is going to win the championship in his hometown. He was in the same situation two years ago. He had a world championship match in the UK, specifically Wales, two years ago when he was facing Roman. He got screwed over and was forced to sing American Pie with Tyson Fury. Sir, Tyson Fury, let me mind you. I guess Kendrick Lamar was right. You always gotta be conflicted at some points, right? But, either way you put it, in the end of the day, I have Drew McIntyre successfully winning the World Heavyweight Championship in his home country, in his near his hometown of Air, and beats Judgment Day as Damian Priest for the World Heavyweight Championship. If you guys want to have fun with these predictions, have some predictions yourself, WWE Clash at the Castle is tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time, exclusively streaming on Peacock. You need to have Peacock Premium in order to stream the event. Or, if you're somehow one of my subscribers watching from somewhere else in the world, it's the WWE Network everywhere else. I probably want to do more wrestling videos in the future or whatever, something like that. And I really want, like, to build myself something. If you want more wrestling videos, comment some ideas down below in the comments and I'll try to make sure I do them. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like. Like so you can rewatch anytime come Sunday. Because Sunday is my birthday and I'm guaranteeing a, like a birthday stream or something. that It's going to happen. Make sure also subscribe and turn on the post notification bell so you don't miss any video from me like at all. We're on the grind to 100 subs. At the current moment, we are... At the current moment in time. At the current moment, we are 35 subscribers away from 100 subs. And I'd really like for you guys to subscribe, turn on post notifications. To make sure you guys stay on the journey with me. And with that, that, that'll be it. Um, I love y'all.
Until next time, peace out. Peace out, y'all. Peace out. And deuces. Ooses. Wait, you're telling me you already passed the 10 minute mark?